Welcome to the D6 Family Ministry Podcast, a place where ideas, principles, and personalities come together to give you a ministry advantage that empowers the church and home. I don't know anything more important in our society or in the kingdom of God than to help the church help the family. Discipleship is not an event, it's a way of life. And one day it just hit me that discipleship at home was not about doing more. It was about inviting Christ into what we were already doing. The goal of family ministry is not families sitting on the couch, holding hands and singing Kumbaya. The ultimate goal is families that love God, love people and make disciples of all peoples. So that's why you're here. You're here to say one hour a week, as significant and as awesome as it is, we know that it's not enough and we want to be intentional with every hour. You're listening to the D6 Podcast. Here are your hosts, Marianne Howard, Ron Hunter, and Josh Wooten. What is happening, Mary Ann Howard? How are you doing today all the way out in Texas? Oh, it's hot. <laughs> it is hot. Summer, <laughs> summer time. I'm so excited about um, our guest today. I'll be honest, when um, I just wrapped up kids camp this week and one of my interns asked me what I was doing on my first day off. And I said, well, I'm reporting, recording some podcasts. And she was asking about, and I said, yeah, I'm getting ready to listen to Karen Kingsbury. And she goes, the author? And she got all fangirled out. She yes. knew it, all of them. And I was like, all right. Yes. Yeah. So Karen, you have got a big fan out there. I know you have many, but um, my little uh, intern, Grace Glover, love, loves, loves her some Karen Kingsbury. Um, oh, nice. So yeah, but with that being said, you know, Karen is going to be talking today about her new series on Pure Flix called A Thousand Tomorrows. And with that being said, I thought, okay, I love to to escape and veg on some TV every once in a while and get into a good series. So I thought, hey, Mary Ann, what is a, a series or a television show um, series that at some point or now that you really got drawn into and and could not wait to that next episode one of those kind of things okay well i just started one for lots of people in my world that i trust their viewing um pleasures you know what i'm saying like they yeah. just have good taste in shows and so we just started the west wing i mean so many people told me how much they love the west wing it's in their top three to five shows of all time and so I fired up the West Wing and I got to tell you, it's old school. It was recorded old school, even like the country's changed. <laughs> and so many things about the world has changed since they shot the West Wing. But I got to tell you, I am in. I am in. They Do you remember the days in the 90s, in the early 2000s, where they would record like ER, where they would record room to room? Oh, yes. Where they would yeah. like shoot it room to room live action almost. Yes. That's yes. how the West Wing The is whole handheld out. thing. Yes. One continuous shot. Yes. Love it. Oh, it is so fast paced, but it took me just a minute to get into it. But now I understand. I mean, it's like I can't. I think it's one that's going to just be on my list. What about oh. you? What about well, you? I, I'm going to add that to my list. I've heard you're not the first person that said that one. And I know it's like 90s and it has flip phones and stuff in it. Yes. But I like to have a running list on my phone of series to watch one day when I retire, when I finally have time list. to like sit and do this. And I'm like, OK, these are like a little treasure trove of shows to watch. You know, Lena and I, I'll be honest, we get sucked into some of the silliest stuff sometimes, but I'm a sucker for like true crime things, Me you know, too. and, Me and too. those documentary series that follows court cases and things yes. like that. And, yes. and I know it's probably not the best content for this show, but like the whole Murdoch thing, we, oh, that was probably the yeah. most recent one that we just got sucked into, you know, yeah. and I, I just am a sucker for those sometimes. And, you know, I'm also a good fan of, you know, for better, for worse, The Office is one of those that no yeah. matter when it's on, I can just pop in an episode. It doesn't and go. Wow. And I appreciate that warped sense of humor of old good, good Michael Scott. <laughs> but, um, you know, and there was another one, A Virgin River that Lena turned yeah. me on to that was yeah. really good. Um, it is good. We got sucked into. It's like a Lifetime movie that never ends. But I realized, yes. that, you know, <laughs> I just like, but, you know, so many shows these days 
go for the shock value that nothing is even shocking anymore. Like I don't like to listen to stuff with a bunch of language or, you know, Mm -hmm. stuff that I wouldn't want to listen to with kids in the room. I'm just, I'm that old guy now, you know? (laughs) And that's what I love about Karen Kingsbury and her um, new series. It's something that, you know, is inspiring, but is done with excellence. And so really excited for you guys to be able to uh, hear about what she's got going on with her son, Tyler Russell, surprise. Um, But I look forward to uh, talking about this and and unpacking this on the backside. So um, get ready, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because you're going to have a new favorite show that you're going to have to watch, uh, A Thousand Tomorrows on Pure Flix. So with that being said, uh, Karen, take it away, girl. Are you feeling spiritually fatigued and in need of rest? If so, we've released a new book that might be just for you, and it's already a top release on Amazon. Rest, Overcoming Spiritual Fatigue by Marianne Howard will help you find the rest you need to overcome spiritual burnout. Rest invites readers into a deeper intimacy with Jesus, the giver of rest. This book will take you on a journey to understanding genuine soul rest and how to achieve it by examining and modifying your spiritual, personal, and professional priorities. Section 1 reveals areas where leaders resist rest, while Section 2 focuses on God's rest as seen in Scripture and how to lead from that rest. The goal is to help you move toward abundant living and leading, while also developing an aggressive attentiveness to the presence of God. At the end of each chapter, you'll find reflection and discussion questions that will help you dig even deeper into the material. Don't hesitate. Get your copy of Rest, Overcoming Spiritual Fatigue today on Amazon and start your journey toward a more restful life. Right now, we have the pleasure of being joined by best-selling author Karen Kingsbury and her son, Tyler Russell, who have just released a brand new show on PureFlix called A Thousand Tomorrows. Karen and Tyler, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, we're happy to be here. It's great. Well, Karen, I want to start with you. You've written so many books in your career. What was it about A Thousand Tomorrows that made it so adaptable for the screen? So A Thousand Tomorrows is a love story that I wrote a number of years ago, uh, but it stayed with me because it was about an angry bull rider and a sick barrel racer and the love that never should have happened between the two of them. So this is a visual world when you look at it and you think, okay, which love story, which story that I've written would best adapt to screen? Sony Affirm came to us and said, we'd like to develop one of your books into a television series for PF. For pure flicks and so we said you know we all agreed that a thousand tomorrows though it's one of my shortest novels if you gave it six hours of content you would really be able to fall into the world not only of ali and cody but the rodeo hmm well tyler i, I want to jump to you on this because not only were you a co-writer on the show but you're also working as a director on other projects now historically TV shows and movies with a Christian tag have sometimes tended to be of a lesser quality cinematically, but A Thousand Tomorrows doesn't have that feel. It's very well done. For you, how important was it that this project be done with excellence? Oh, thanks for saying that. Yeah, I mean, it was really important. I think that I'm I'm a consumer as much as anybody else, so I've seen every kind of uh, Christian movie and, and, and film adaptation of a book. And so I think for me in telling this story, I just wanted it to be honest um, you know, as a Christian storyteller, I think the quality doesn't need to be less just because it's it's Christian, you know. And at the end of the day, I also knew that not everybody gets their happy ending this side of heaven. Not everything is perfect. So I think I set out to just tell the most honest story I could. And, and that meant, you know, Cody starts in a place where he's struggling and he has certain things that he turns to for fulfillment and happiness that really doesn't leave him satisfied. Um, but it's part of his character arc and it's part of where he ends up turning to, to find Ali, who is so different than the kind of life that he's lived. So I think it was important to tell an honest story um, because even in our brokenness and in our our messy parts, God can redeem it and God can shine through. And I think it's more interesting to watch a story of brokenness and honesty rather than someone who's just perfect the whole time. You know, no one wants to watch that. Mm. And and just so our listeners know, like I've seen the first two episodes of the series and 
<laughs> Speaking of not being satisfied, I, I I needed to know what happened. There's a chance I may have gone on Google and typed in a thousand tomorrows summary and ending because uh-huh. uh, I was like, I need to know. So I and I was like, OK, maybe I can track down the book. I, you guys uh-huh. got you guys had me wanting more. So which I'm excited. I, I mean, I, I can wait for the yeah. we'll That's get you look at you. The, the book is just now released brand new at, with the move with the like media tie in cover with the actors. We'll get you a copy. <laughs> I appreciate that because. Uh, I was like, and I know like I'm such a, a child of, you know, this age, but I'm like, there is a book, but there are TV episodes I could watch too. That would be so much faster. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious about what happens. I think I have an inclination because I might've found some reviews, but I'm, I still need to find out. Uh, well, Karen, I want to jump back to you. Uh, you have never shied away from your faith, whether it's in your books, this project, or even your Facebook posts. We're living in a day today where we see so many people walking away from their faith. What has kept your faith strong, both as a Christian and as an author? It's funny. For me, it's it's the other question, like, how in the world could they walk away, right? Like, I don't understand that. Like, I, For me, I became a believer in Jesus at the level of, like, relationship with him in my mid-20s. I fell in love with God's word. And, you know, we started off living in a garage, my husband and I. It was a converted garage, single car garage. We had no windows. We had just room for a pull-out couch bed. And we loved Jesus so much. And we'd sit on the picnic table outside. This was in L.A. He'd play worship songs on his guitar. And it was just like, awesome, Lord. Okay, fast forward to where we are now. And, you know, 30 million books sold and making our own movies and things, you know, adding a TV show. Okay. And nothing has changed. Like, we've been married 35 years we love the Lord. Like I believe it, right? This is just earth. Like I'm not living for this. I'm not living for any of it here. So everything that I do and create the beautiful stories that God puts on my heart, they always contain physical, intellectual, and emotional aspects, but always physical, always they have the spiritual and that spiritual, whether like Tyler said, you know, whether the person is struggling with cystic fibrosis, like Allie in a thousand tomorrows coming out on pure flicks or whether they are angry at God. They, you know, someone they love died young. I mean, those things are real, but Jesus is not the reason those things happen. He's the rescue from them. And I believe it to my core. I'll believe it to the day I die. It doesn't matter. You know, I, I want to love people through their concerns and their, their doubts that make them turn around and walk away. I don't understand it. He, it's almost the scene from the Bible where people are leaving and Jesus looks at his disciples and says, well, what about you? And they're like, well, where are we going to go? Like mm-hmm. you're it, you are it. And I do think there's a revival happening in our, in our land. And I see it in different places. There's a heartbeat of it in different places and different forms of media and um, worship and things. And I, and I think that God has called us to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. And Tyler, I'm going to ask you a similar question because people may look at you and say, you know, because of your age, you should be in that category that's leaving the church. You should be the one that's going through deconversion and deconstruction, especially somebody that's in the arts. That should be driving you away from your faith. And yet we see you're using that to amplify your faith. What has kept you in the church? Yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, I think that I have my own share of, you know, pain from church or, or pain from people, but I know that God's never failed me. And I know that despite what, um, we're all broken, we're all people. And and my mom says this funny thing, you know, as the body of Christ, we are one body and where there's a body, there's body odor, right? It's like a funny thing she says, and it's true because there's no perfect um, church. Yeah. There's no perfect church. There's no perfect place, but I know that God has called me to tell stories, to impact the world. And, and maybe it looks like, um, challenging people with a question, or maybe it it looks like saying, Hey, uh, like in a thousand tomorrows, Cody's angry. So what are you going to do with anger? And how, how does anger help you? It doesn't help you. What does forgiveness look like later on in the season? They talk about being strong and courageous. Um, I think for me, it's a privilege to put that stuff on paper, to put it on screen. And it might not always look like, um, the person's converting to, to Christianity by the end of the movie, or, or, you know, there's some kind of altar call moment. But I hope that everything I I create points people back to the Lord because um, he really is our peace. He really is all that we have. And he's never failed me. And in all my years where people might have failed me or um, I feel hurt by by people, I know that God is someone who is is constant and he is faithful. That's really good. Well, with this being the D6 podcast, much of what we do revolves around Deuteronomy 6, which commands parents to teach their children the things of God and lead them in truth. So, Tyler, I want to ask you this. What is the most important lesson that you've learned from your mom? 
Ooh, there's so many. I don't think we have enough time. <laughs> um, I think about, I mean, it was really my mom and my dad combined. They always said growing up, to whom much is given, much is required, you know, much is expected. So whether or not you um, are put on the varsity team at, at school, uh, maybe you're given a lead part in a play or like this, you know, you have a TV series coming out. Whatever you've been given, God's expecting some something of you. So how are you going to treat people? How are you going to serve people? Um, how is your life going to speak greater um, because you're serving the Lord? So I think that's something that always sticks with me is that no matter what I've been handed, what I've been given, God's expecting something in return. How am I sacrificing for him? How am I bringing people into community with him and communion with him? Um, so that's a lesson that I think stays with me and it's it's challenged me and it's continued to grow me in every season of my life. Hmm. Now, let me flip that question around. Karen, working with your son, raising your son, what have you learned from Tyler? Well, Tyler is part of that generation. Like you're talking about that they're questioning everything and wondering, you know, about church. And I think when I was in my twenties, thirties, and we were raising our kids in our forties, like we, you just get ready, you get dressed, you go to church on Sunday and talk about it on the way home and have a nice meal. And that's all, you know, Tyler has helped me to lean into the really, this is a truth. When the Lord talks about the church, he's not talking about the building at, you know, fourth and main. He is talking about the church, the followers of Jesus Christ who are part of the kingdom of God. That's who he's talking about. Church is amazing. Church is a place where you can connect and have community, but churches are flawed. Leaders are going to fail. I mean, this is just the reality. So I think he's helped me and my husband to grasp the importance of loving. We we have a group of young people that come meet at our house for ping pong and, you know, Super Bowl parties, whatever it would be. And to be a light to them, like let for that moment, let this be that fragment of the church, so to speak. And I think he's taught me that I don't so much. I love to evangelize. Like I love to, we have a ministry that our family runs called uh, You Were Seen. You Were Seen.com. There are little cards you carry around. They're sold at Hobby Lobby. I, I feel like now I don't so much say, hey, do you want to come to church? We might get there. But I say, hey, do you want to come to Jesus? that's where the movement's going to happen. It's going to happen because people are compelled to follow a savior rather than uh, like a sanctuary, a certain place that you're called to be at. That will let you down. Jesus never will. Hmm. Well, the series is tremendous. Um, like Tyler said, it, it may not just like beat you over the head with a Bible and it may not be, you know, getting you to an altar call, but everything that's done is through a biblical worldview and lens. And I think what Tyler mentioned about his faith, you see that in the series where it goes along. So as we finish, I want to ask both of you this question. What is your hope for a thousand tomorrows? Yeah. I mean, my hope for a thousand tomorrows is that people enjoy it, <laughs> that they love the show and <laughs> that it's something that resonates with them. But deeper than that, I hope that it heals people. I hope that it, it makes them look at their own life and say, I see parts of myself in Cody's anger. So how can I forgive or, um, you know, maybe they've been handed a diagnosis like Ali has. Okay. So th these aren't, these don't feel like good cards, but like Ali's mom said, you know, God gave you life. And if all we get is today, how can we be strong and courageous? How can we make the most of the time that we have? So I hope people enjoy it, but I hope that it, it um, that it becomes something that they can talk about and share with people and that it becomes a conversation and a show that can bring healing and courage when it comes to facing our tomorrow's and um, living authentically for the Lord. Hmm. Yeah, I think for me, um, you know, this Pure Flix is doing something they've never done before. With A Thousand Tomorrows, they have Bible study and ancillary piece that you can download from their website, pureflix.com. And so I've done a 10 minute teaching video piece for each episode. And then on top of that, there's an ancillary piece that you can download that will have Bible verses and questions for your small group. What does that look like? It might be your family. You know, kids gather around the table with their parents. We always, we still do that. We have questions and we do that every day, you know, when we eat dinner, anytime we're together. Um, but this allows you not just to binge it and enjoy it, but to actually digest it and have it be something you share. Small groups are where we grow. It's where life happens. So it might be your Bible study. It might be your neighbors, your family, your friends, but get together in a small group, watch it again, enjoy the Bible study aspect so that you can take something more away than just entertainment. Hmm. Well, listeners, if you want to check out this new series, you can find A Thousand Tomorrows on Pure Flix. And I will warn you, 
the opening scene will get you and it will emotionally and everything, it will hook you in. I'm not going to say anything more about it, but it will get you. Um, Karen and Tyler, thank you so much for joining us today and best wishes with the show. Thank hey, you thanks, so much, David. David. Appreciate yeah, I appreciate you. Attention all parents and teenagers. Do you want to strengthen your relationship and deepen your connection with each other? Dr. Richard Ross and Dr. Gus Reyes have created an online app that can help you do just that. Download 30 Days Parents and Teens today. By dedicating just 10 minutes a day for 30 days, you can experience a transformational journey with your teenager that will bring you closer than ever before. You'll learn practical skills and strategies for communicating effectively, resolving conflicts, and understanding each other's perspectives. By connecting your hearts and minds during this 30-day experience, you'll build a stronger and more loving relationship that will last a lifetime. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to strengthen your bond with your teenager. The 30 Days Parents and Teens app is available in both English and Spanish. Download today and start your journey towards deeper connection and understanding. Well, I just absolutely love this interview. I was kind of just sitting on the edge of my seat today or as we were listening and just thinking about what they were both saying. They had both great um, contributions to the conversation. And I love when Tyler said, you know, God has never failed. And I love that he said this about the church. He said, where there is body, there is body odor. There's no perfect church. I just, you and I have talked a lot about this over the course of time. And what do you think about that statement? Where there is body, where there's a body, there's body odor in reference to the church. It is so true though. You know, it, it's, you know, I just got back from camp and, you know, it's, it's the, the kids are the easy part most of the time, it, you know, the parental figures can be challenging at times, but I love it. It's the truth. It's what we signed up for. Nobody is perf perfect. You know, it's like the old saying, where, where there is sheep, there is poop. You know, yeah. it's the same concept. But, you know, as he talks about that, I love the way that he even said, you know, it doesn't, it, it, not everything has to end with this perfect salvation moment that it all gets wrapped up in a bow. There are right. some, some things left to uh, interpretation in this, but one of the, the things that I do love with this, you know, when they said Sony is one of the distributors that that jumped on board with this and want approached her, I got really excited because the truth is, and I think David said this, you know, a lot of times, unfortunately, Christian movies and shows and content within the entertainment world has been viewed as second rate as far as quality and cinematography and yeah. acting and some of the things that make great art. And it drives me crazy because one of the first characteristics of God that is mentioned in scripture is that he is creative. In the beginning, God created, and we are created in his image to do the same things, to create. So as Christians, we should be leading the way in these arenas with creativity because we have the ultimate creator on our side who has created us to do these things. So I love when people gravitate towards this. And, and mm -hmm. so it really made me um, excited to be able to check out this. And, and, you know, I love the fact that there's a, a, an avenue for good, wholesome content because yes. the world yes, desperately need it. needs it. We you know, need so it. if you're looking for that, make the choice. You can choose Pure Flix over Netflix. And I'm not saying, you know, oh gosh, you, we can't be in the world, but we're supposed to be in it, but not of it. Right. You know, and our bodies are temple and what we take into our eyes and what we listen to and what we ingest in our in our spirits or or who we become, you know. And so right. I love the fact that they're giving us another uh, avenue there. Absolutely. I loved I loved this interview. Very interesting. And I'm excited about how God wants to use it. I love what you said about there can be excellence and creativity in Christian entertainment. And um, so I just I love that 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 God is using um, Karen Kingsbury to elevate his name um, yeah. and fame. I just and not only Karen, but his, her yeah. son, I what it. a cool, I unlikely know. pairing. You know, you always hear these so cool. like the Cohen brothers or the brothers that did the stranger things, you know, but so this cool. is like, once again, leading the way. Yep. It's a, you know, a mom and a son, you know, <laughs> working together to do this. I think that's the coolest thing. You know, I just thought that's that awesome. that's so incredibly awesome. That's and so I powerful. 
I hope that you guys would join us in praying that this does well and there would be more and more. You know, you see things like The Chosen taking a halt and more movies like The Jesus Revolution and things doing really well in cinema. And, and I believe we've got the best stories to tell on the planet. Yes. We have a book chocked full of them, of real life stories. And so I love to see God's name, like you said, being elevated, push forward, especially mm-hmm. in the arena of, of entertainment. So. Mm-hmm. So well, I, I hope you guys will um, enjoy us next week. And um, until then, we are praying for you. We hope you have an incredible week. And if you have time, fire up Pure Flix and be blessed by Karen Kingsbury's new show on Pure Flix. Have a great week. You've been listening to the D6 Podcast. You can learn more about D6 at d6family.com. 